the world has been a quieter place during the pandemic lockdown. Many species have emerged to reclaim their habitat and researchers have been right on their tail. The project we, we launched uh, through the International Biologging Society looks at all species for which we can obtain data. So that ranges from very small creatures to whales, and it includes terrestrial and marine animals, as well as a lot of birds. We put out a call for collaboration to our research community a few weeks ago, and we got a phenomenal response to that call. And I think we are now up to 100 and 58 species covering 244 study populations around the globe. So it's a truly global collaborative research initiative. So what is biologging? I mean, how does it, how does it work? There are many different technologies, but it's uh, the basic concept is uh, to use these miniature, uh, really sophisticated electronic devices, which are attached to an animal in a very safe way. And uh, these devices record a range of data and uh, it differs from study to study, but typically biologists are interested in getting positional data and we use different satellite tracking systems for that. For example, GPS satellite tracking or Argos satellites. Uh, that tells us where the animal is in the landscape. But many of these devices are also fitted with tiny little accelerometers that tell us something about the activity of the animal, whether it's resting or whether it's moving. So this really provides a gold mine of information. Biologist Christian Rutz is the president of the Biologers Society. He says a positive example of the anthropause is deer who've become emboldened without human contact. Data gathered could help inform such things as road network design. There may also be species that are being put under increased pressure during this lockdown period. Uh, some of my colleagues have raised concerns, for example, about endangered species like rhinos and raptors being put at increased risk of poaching or persecution when human presence levels decreased in more remote areas like, like nature reserves and so on. There is no doubt humans do far more harm than good. We tend to think about our impact on the environment in terms of pollution, in terms of CO2, in terms of um, metal pollution of the ocean and these things. But actually, our one of our biggest impacts on the environment is just being there, doing the things that we do every day. And I think Chernobyl is certainly an incredible example of what happens when you take away the people. It was 1986 when the nuclear power plant exploded and the radiation fallout saw people abandon an area of around 4,000 square kilometres. Professor Jim Smith has studied the impact on wildlife. Just a few years after the accident, Belarusian and Ukrainian scientists noticed that the species associated with humans, so things like pigeons and rats, were disappearing because the humans had disappeared and wild species were coming back. So we expect to see some subtle effects of radiation in some of the hot spots in the exclusion zone. And we, indeed, we have seen some subtle effects. But now, 30 years on, the radioactivity is more than 100 times lower than it was right after the accident. And the wildlife seem to be coping very well and doing even better because the people aren't there. So they're adapting better to radiation than humans. We're actually, humans are worse than radiation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I always say that the, the world's worst ever nuclear accident has done less damage to the ecosystem than, than people just going about their daily business. So are you seeing um, you know, animals that were possibly very rare coming back in force and, and every, everything's just sort of really taking off? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean the, the, the first recorded increases were on things like wild boar who have a fast multiplication rate, so they reproduce quickly and, and their populations grew very quickly. Uh, elk, roe ro deer, uh, wolves increased, um, and things like lynx, which have, uh, were very rare before the accident, white-tailed eagle, black stork, they weren't there before the accident, but after the accident they've come back. From tragedy, scientists hope some good will come and valuable data that will help policymakers and stakeholders make decisions that will work with nature. This is, of course, an opportunity to inform conservation science and to 
uh, to try and find ways of mitigating impact on, on wildlife. But they are bigger, much bigger objectives uh, related to this. Uh, objectives related to, to planning a sustainable future on this planet. There is increasing realization that we humans depend on a healthy environment. So ensuring that ecosystems are healthy and are functioning well has direct benefits for humans. So we hope that this biologging initiative will help us uh, come up with innovative and, and surprising, unforeseen uh, strategies for planning for a better future.